Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Vans faces a major lawsuit, the Red Bull Air Race season wraps up in Vegas. Are you ready for the hoverboard? I'm Bree Cross, it's October 21st, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The family of a four-year-old, Zoe Wall, who was fatally injured, when the Vans RV-10 she was aboard went down in May of last year, has filed a lawsuit seeking $35 million in damages. While the lawsuit is specifically filed against Vans Aircraft and FlowScan, a company that manufactures a fuel flow transducer that was mounted on the aircraft, it also indicts the entire concept of the certification of experimental amateur-built aircraft. The lawsuit claims that Vans, quote, exploits a regulatory loophole to mass-produce kit airplanes while avoiding critical design, safety, and airworthiness requirements. The filing is lengthy, but in essence, it implies that any aircraft that does not comply with FAA certification standards can be held at fault if an accident occurs. The suit claims that Vans mass produces aircraft of untested, unproven, and unsafe designs. It also claims that Vans derives substantially increased profits and market share by being able to mass produce aircraft without having to go through the FAA certification process and to demonstrate the safety of its aircraft. There is no denying that the loss of life in an aircraft accident is a tragedy. However, the wording in this suit appears to go far beyond addressing the issues directly connected with the accident and seems to contradict the conclusions of the NTSB's probable cause findings, which concluded that the accident occurred as a product of pilot error and a faulty installation of a power plant accessory, which seems to contradict the onus of the suit filed. a and Jim Campbell had a short chat with attorney Matthew Clark, who is suing Vans and FlowScan, and despite a number of specific but polite questions that raise factual objections to Clark's assertions in the published suit, Clark abruptly ended the call. We will keep you posted. It seems that last Sunday's final Red Bull Air Race of the season was a turbulent affair, literally. Kirby Chambliss and Michael Goulian of the USA didn't have the winning hand at the rainy, windy Red Bull Air Race season finale in Las Vegas, but it's reported they'll have new cards up their sleeves when they return to the world's fastest motorsport series in 2016. Chambliss, who finished a season-high third, said, quote, The plane is running really good. It's still not exactly where we wanted, but we've definitely advanced this year. In the off-season, we'll work on everything, maybe even my head a little bit, and come back really strong. Goulian is looking forward to the new season as well. He said, quote, It was a building year. We have a brand new team and a brand new plane. Next year, we'll come back with a very highly modified airplane, end quote. Paul Bonham was crowned the 2015 Red Bull Air Race World Champion on Sunday, after finishing a close second place in the final race of the season behind Matt Hall. We'll all be standing by for the excitement of the next season of Red Bull Air Racing. After the break, standing atop whirling propellers looks like fun. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. It has almost the same mystique of the elusive jetpack. Imagine stepping onto a platform and skimming across the ground or water, standing atop what is essentially a multi-rotor aircraft. That is the concept of the hoverboard and Canadian inventor Catalan Alexandru Duru in May shattered the world record for a hoverboard flight on his prototype 
flying up to 15 feet above a lake in Quebec, Canada over a distance of about 905 feet in a little more than 90 seconds. Who would have thought there was a world hoverboard record? Now Duru and his company, Omni Hoverboards, is working on a second prototype, which he demonstrated for a Canadian Broadcast Corporation reporter. In a video released by the CBC, we see the second prototype is in the rough early stages of development. It's powered by a bank of lithium polymer batteries. Who knows, maybe one day we'll all be skimming to work on a personal flying machine that can be stored in the closet and charged from a wall outlet. It makes us wonder if the FAA ought to start working on hoverboard regulations. They seem to need a big head start on these sort of things. With some 2000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. And if you think about it, the knowledge required for you on the ground portion of the practical test as a private pilot and as a commercial pilot is literally identical. At the Redbird Migration Flight Training Conference of 2014, Roger Sharp tells us how simulators can change the way we do primary flight training. This is great information for students and instructors. Search Roger Sharp Redbird Migration 2014 on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, Air Force Reservists to fly the B-1B Lancer. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100, and ATX-100G transceivers are the next-gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Air Force Reserve has reactivated the 489th Bomb Group and associated elements during a ceremony at Diaz Air Force Base in Texas. It will operate in a classic association with the 7th Bomb Wing at Diaz flying the B-1B Lancer Bomber. The FAA has issued a safety alert for operators regarding the carriage of spare lithium batteries. Uninstalled lithium batteries present a risk of both igniting and fueling fires in cargo and baggage compartments and should not be placed in any checked baggage. The FAA has issued a special airworthiness information bulletin concerning cracked aft fin attachment fittings that affect all series of Cessna models 150, 152 airplanes produced from 1966 to 1986. Textron has updated the Cessna supplemental inspection document to address this concern. Hartzell Propeller has delivered more than 150 advanced airfoil 5-blade props for DAR TBM 700, 850, and 900 series aircraft since receiving FAA type certificate approval 18 months ago. These propellers are flying on more than 20% of the DAR TBM fleet. The leader of NASA's human spaceflight programs from 1963 to 1969, Dr. George E. Mueller, passed away last week. Mueller effectively created and headed the Office of Manned Space Flight at NASA. His strong leadership was critical to achieving success on a set of extraordinary goals, which included landing on the moon. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Deep space exploration is underway as NASA's Cassini spacecraft is wrapping up its time in the region of Saturn's large icy moons with a series of three close encounters with Enceladus. Images are expected to begin arriving soon after the flyby, which will provide the first opportunity for a close-up look at the North Polar region of Enceladus. 
On October 28th, Cassini will come dizzyingly close to the icy moon, passing a mere 30 miles above the moon's south polar region. During this encounter, Cassini will make its deepest ever dive through the moon's plume of icy spray, collecting images and valuable data about what's going on beneath the frozen surface. Bonnie Baratti, a Cassini science team member, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, said, quote, We've been following a trail of clues on Enceladus for 10 years now. The amount of activity on and beneath this moon's surface has been a huge surprise to us. We're still trying to figure out what its history has been and how it came to be this way, end quote. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.